I'm Pat Welsh from Pollock Media Group. I've been a radio programmer and consultant for radio stations in every format and genre around the world, both internet radio and over-the-air radio as well. On behalf of Live 365, I'm presenting a series of tutorials on radio programming. This is part two of four of Principles of Programming Music Radio. This tutorial is about music selection and playlist creation with the goal of helping you maximize your audience, satisfying your existing listeners, and attracting new ones. It's intended for Live 365 programmers from all stations and genres. In part two, I'll show a model of a possible category structure for a contemporary radio station. Contemporary meaning one that's playing some new music. This would be loosely based on a top 40 radio station, or maybe country, hip-hop, alternative, or adult contemporary. This structure would be vaguely familiar to a programmer of any of these formats. Of course, oldies-based stations, oldies, classic rock, etc., would be based on a slightly different concept. This model will include the category structure for this contemporary station and the rotation clocks. We'll start with some definitions. These are some of the types of categories that are used by radio programmers to categorize their music. Generally, the categories are grouped chronologically. The first group, currents, are the newest songs, songs that are still on their way up. This could range anything from a brand new release to hits that have been popular for several months but are still at their peak. The second group, Recurrence, consists of recent hits. These are songs that are past their prime in the sense that they're not on their way up the charts, they're on their way down. Uh, consequently, they receive slower rotation than current hits. Recurrence could be songs that range from anywhere from, say, six months old to two years old, but they're still extremely important songs. They're still the favorite songs of many people in the audience, and they need to be exposed a lot. The final group is Gold, or Oldies. These are the older hits, usually two years old or more. And how far back a station goes depends on the genre. For a top 40 station, for example, few of their gold songs are more than five years old, and almost none of them would be older than 10. On the other hand, formats like country, adult contemporary, alternative, etc., may go back as far as 20 or 30 years with their gold. And of course, oldies and classic rock are all gold formats. So let's take a look at the categories for our theoretical contemporary station. This is a simplified model and includes just a few categories. These are the current categories. We're going to start with the A rotation, or the hot songs. These are the biggest hits on the station at any given moment. They receive the fastest rotation, and songs rarely start out in A. Normally they start in either B or C and then have to prove themselves to get up into the heaviest rotation. B, the medium category, is where songs from superstar artists might start, or perhaps they're new songs from new artists that started in C, proved themselves, and then earned the right to move up to B. The medium would receive the second fastest rotation on the station. And for the C category, or new currents, this is typically where new songs from new artists start. And an important consideration is that not all songs that start in C are going to move up to B and then A. Some of the songs will die in C right there. The normal pattern for adding songs, you'd add them into the C's, they'd earn their right to go up to B, and when they proved to be big hits, they would move up to the A category. Only A songs then should stay in the music library, an important consideration. Songs not good enough to advance to A in the first place aren't good enough to move back to recurrent. Now let's look at our last two categories, the recurrence and the gold. The D or recurrent category consists of songs that have moved down from the A category. And it's important to emphasize that not every song will go back to recurrent. Only the songs that have achieved A rotation, that is, only the songs that became the biggest hits, should go back into the recurrent category. It's also important to stress that because this is a simplified model, we have only one recurrent category. In reality, many radio stations have two or possibly more recurrent categories. That's also true for the gold categories. We have one, the E category. Most radio stations will have two or more gold categories. Now, gold categories can be separated by strength, for example, primary hits and secondary hits, or possibly by era, hits from the 2000s 
hits from the 1990s, hits from the 1980s. Of course, oldies and classic rock stations, the gold-based formats, will have multiple gold categories, all gold categories. And for example, they might divide their categories based on decades, such as the 60s, 70s, and 80s, as well as separating by primary and secondary. Here's a look at the entire model again with a chart that shows the rotations of each of the categories. You can see that we have a column for the number of songs in each category, the number of times that each category would be played in one hour in our model, and then the last column includes turnover. Turnover is the average time in hours and minutes before each song would be repeated. Again, it's only an average time. This is just a model, of course. Everything here is oversimplified. Just to give you an indication of the differences, an FM Top 40 station would play its current music even faster. The A rotation at Top 40 is often 90 minutes, or songs that get played as much as 110 times in a week, although it may only be three or four songs receiving that much rotation. And gold categories for gold-based formats like oldies and classic rock will turn over much slower than this. They may have some songs that play more than once a day, but other categories that may take a week or more before they repeat. One other important note, FM radio has more freedom to repeat music than internet radio does. Because of regulations, internet-only radio, including Live 365, faces legal restrictions on repeating artists and songs. In order to achieve the rotations you just saw, we need a clock. The name comes from the circular design of the clocks. It used to be the programmers would lay a 45 RPM record on a piece of paper and trace a circle around it. They ended up with a pie chart with each slice being a programming element, a song, or it could be a DJ break, or some kind of interstitial element, such as a jingle. What we're about to see is a clock in a linear form, also known as a music sequence. I'm leaving out all of the non-musical elements. So here are two sample clocks for our contemporary model. Now, radio stations often have dozens of different clocks. Clocks cover an hour of programming at a time, and they often have different clocks for different times of the day. For example, in the morning show, perhaps fewer songs are needed because you have more other elements like news and weather and traffic to include. Then perhaps the music is different at different times of the day. In particular, at night, many radio stations play more new songs, so the clocks will reflect the changes in need from time to time. The words balance and variety come up again as keys to building a clock, just as they do in so many other aspects of programming a radio station. Balance includes spreading out the categories evenly. Notice how the A's are spread evenly throughout these clocks, the B's, etc. You don't want to bunch the brand new songs together, and you don't want to bunch up the old songs either. This concludes Part 2 of Principles of Programming Music Radio. In Part 3, we'll talk about important rules and considerations for creating the daily playlist.